So under this section, we want to uh, discuss circuit breaker ratings and the uh, circuit breaker selection for our circuitry. So you will see that uh, at times your job role will involve selecting circuit breaker for your secretary. So how do you select the right circuit breaker for your secretary? So that is exactly what we are going to be discussing in this section. Getting the right circuit breaker for your secretary. So now there are a few things that we need to understand for on the circuit breaker or about the circuit breaker before we can select the right circuit breaker for our circuitry. So there are a few things that we need to remember about circuit breakers while we are selecting these circuit breakers. We want to put it at the back of our mind that uh, circuit breakers, they are required to perform certain duties when they are in our circuit, okay? And uh, among these duty, uh, one, that the circuit breaker should be capable of opening the 40 circuits, okay? That is breaking the circuit when there is fourth current in the circuit without damaging the circuit breaker. So that is one of the major functions opening the circuit when there is fourth current in the circuit. It must be able to open the circuit. Then secondly, we know that the, there are times we may have the circuit breaker tripped and the fault, the particular fault that caused the trip is still in the circuit. Okay, and then the circuit breaker may tend to close on that uh, Foot. So when it is closing, that circuit breaker should be able to withstand that fourth current while it is closing. So that brings us to the second, okay, the requirement for your particular circuit breaker that it must be able to close on a fourth current, okay? Assuming you're having a short circuit in the circuits now. Of course, when the circuit breaker closes, it will definitely see that short circuit current. It should be able to make its contact without damaging the contact at that short circuit current. So all of these are some of the things that you need to take care of while you are selecting the appropriate circuit breaker for your circuitry. And then finally, it must be able to carry the fourth current for a short time, okay? This will actually give other circuit breaker downstream to clear the fault before that particular circuit breaker, if it is upstream, to trip. What we mean is that if that particular circuit breaker is feeding other circuit breakers that feed other loads, okay? Because we require the arrangement to trip closest to the fault. Definitely, once there is that short circuit fault or heavy current event, the circuit breaker upstream will see it, but it should not trip. You should be able to have that short time delay to allow other circuit breaker downstream to trip. So we are going to make all of this clearer later as we move ahead. So the first thing that we will know about the circuit breaker is uh, the nominal rated current or and uh, the nominal rated uh, voltage, okay? So the nominal rated current of circuit breaker is the normal operating current of that particular circuit breaker. If you take this as an example now, you will see that the normal operating uh, current of this particular circuit breaker is what is stated here, okay? What is written here, which is about 160 amps, okay? This is 
the amount of load, the maximum amount of load it is supposed to carry normally without causing it to trip. That is the normal rated current of uh, this particular circuit breaker. Then another term that we need to understand on the circuit breaker is the nominal rated breaking capacity. That is the maximum current that the circuit breaker can break without damaging the circuit breaker. Okay, that is the breaking capacity of uh, the circuit breaker. So normally on the circuit breaker, as we will see later, it is always given as uh, the service breaking capacity or the maximum breaking capacity. Okay, as we will see later in the course of it. So we have looked at two parameters that are used to specify the circuit breaker already, the nominal rated current and the breaking, nominal breaking capacity, rated breaking capacity of the circuit breaker. Then the other term that we need to understand is uh, the nominal rated making capacity of the circuit breaker. Remember again that the circuit breaker can close on load. Why that is can close when the fourth current, okay, or when the fourth is still in the circuit, which means that it can close on the fourth. Okay, so if that happens, the circuit breaker should not be damaged. Okay, it should be able to withstand that fourth current while making or while closing the circuit breaker without causing any damage at all. So the maximum, uh, the rated making capacity of the circuit breaker is always uh, stated, okay, in uh, kilo amps. So that we also need to know on uh, each of the circuit breaker that we are selecting. Then the other parameter that we need to understand is the impulse withstand voltage. The impulse withstand voltage. When we say the impulse withstand voltage, we are talking about the maximum surge, voltage surge that can go through the circuit breaker without damaging the circuit breaker. It could be lightning surge or what have you. Okay, the maximum of it that can go through the circuit breaker without damaging the insulation of your circuit breaker. So it is always and it's usually rated in uh, kilo volts. Okay, so that we'll see later. Then the rated frequency, the operating frequency of that particular circuit breaker, if it is 50 hertz or 60 hertz, you will see it clearly on the nameplate of the circuit breaker. And of course, the number of poles, okay, of the circuit breaker, though it may not be stated on the nameplate, but you will see it clearly, which are the number of terminals you have on your circuit breaker, whether it is three pole or four pole. Okay, we know that when we are looking at um, a single phase load, or single phase uh, distribution system who need a fourth pole, okay? Line one, line two, line three, and uh, the neutral. But if we are supplying a three phase load directly, or we are in a medium or high voltage environment, of course, the circuit breaker that will be needed will be a three pole circuit breaker. So the pole, number of poles is another thing that we need to look at. Then the kind of trip mechanism, okay, that the circuit breaker that is uh, controlling the operations of uh, the circuit breaker, we also need to know, and it is always stated. If it is not clearly stated, there are other indications that will clearly tell you, as we will see later, that that particular circuit breaker is using this particular type of trip mechanism or the other. So as we discussed earlier, if uh, you are not familiar with it, you check our training on uh, 
introduction to circuit breakers, understanding uh, circuit breakers. Okay, so the under that topic we discuss the thermal and magnetic uh, tripping device, how it functions, and how you are you be able to identify them on your circuit breaker. So the trip type, whether it is thermal, controlled by the biometallic strip, which is basically for overload. And then whether it is magnetic, okay, controlled by uh, a trip coil, okay, for a statinous strip in the case of a short circuit and every other very high current event, okay. Or the circuit breaker is having both trip device or mechanism in them, which is always advisable that uh, the circuit breaker you selected should have both so that it will be able or it will assist you in handling situations that uh, both of them can actually handle. So let, so let us look at the nameplate information of the circuit breaker, the things that you find on the circuit breaker nameplate. So we are going to actually start with uh, the miniature circuit breaker. We'll start the mini with the miniature circuit breaker. On the right of your screen now, you will see that we have the circuit breaker trip or tripping curve. Okay, so if you are not familiar with the circuit breaker tripping curve, you should check our training on understanding circuit breaker tripping curve. It is very important you understand the circuit breaker tripping curve because it will aid you to select the best circuit breaker for your circuitry. Okay, so this is the circuit breaker tripping curve. Here we have the thermal section and here we have the magnetic uh, section. All of this will briefly, A, B, C and D curve, we'll briefly explain them later. But let us look at what we'll find on the face of uh, our circuit breaker. So if you look at this circuit breaker, you see the manufacturer's name, okay, and uh, the model of uh, the circuit breaker. Now we have B32 on this particular circuit breaker. So here is telling us that the nominal current rating, okay, the normal operating current of the circuit breaker is 32 amps, 32 amps, okay. Then this B is telling us the operating curve that is guiding the operation of this circuit breaker. So if you look at it, this is the B operating curve. Like I said earlier, if you are not too familiar with the circuit breaker triple curve, check out our earlier training on the understanding of circuit breaker triple curve. So if you look at it, you will see that the circuit breaker the tripping range, the amount of current that will make it to trip is between three to five times the nominal current rating, okay? That's the big curve, between three, as you can see here, between three and five times the nominal current rating. So what this is telling us is that the nominal current of the circuit breaker is 32 amps, which means that that 32 amps is operating on the left side of this circuit breaker because here we have it multiple of that is the horizontal axis as multiple of the current nominal current rating okay so if we are looking at this particular circuit breaker now what here is telling us is that we have one times 32 one and a half times 32 three times 32 amps okay so on the horizontal axis we have multiples of the nominal current rating. Why on the vertical axis we have the time scale, okay? The amount of time it will take the circuit breaker to trip in seconds, okay? Now, if you look at this, it's telling us that it is a B curve circuit breaker, which is here, okay? Between three and uh, five, that is when it will trip. So like we were explaining before, when your load okay, is 32 or less, it means that your circuit breaker will be operating in this region, 
okay? Which means that the circuit breaker can operate infinitely without tripping. You see it to operate infinitely. But when you start having something that is more than 32, let's say one and a half times 32, which is about 48 amps, okay? So this is about one and a half times 40, uh, 32, 48 amps. So what here is telling us is that when there is an overload that is about of that is of uh, the magnitude of 48 amps, 1.5 times the nominal current rating, okay, the circuit breaker will sustain that overload for about 40 seconds, as you can see here. Are you getting it on a trip curve before it will trip? That is overload, okay. You see that there is time lapse before it will trip but if you have very high current event like short circuit you see that if it does not trip instantaneously immediately it can cause damage or damages to your circuitry your cable your equipment and every other thing downstream or even upstream of uh, the circuit breaker so what this big curve is telling us is that when we have current that is three times between three times and five times this 32, the circuit breaker will trip instantaneously. Okay? That means if we are, say, maybe four times this 32 now, which is about uh, 128, 128 amps, okay, on the circuit, this circuit breaker will just trip instantaneously. Are we getting it? Okay? So there may be short, some short time delay, okay, when it is exactly three. There may be some short time delay, as you can see here, when it's exactly three. But once it's beyond three amps, uh, three times the nominal current rate is say about four, it will trip instantaneously, okay? So we'll see the, the use of this as we go ahead. Okay? So when you know that in your circuit, you will not have this kind, this level of current, three to five times this 32, okay? And you can use the B circuit breaker. But if you go and use it in a circuit that uh, maybe have uh, uh, inductive load that can take more than five times this, it means you'll be, with this circuit breaker, you'll be having nuisance tripping, okay? Now, if you look to, before we go to the second circuit breaker on your screen, if you look, you'll see the nominal voltage rating. It is 415 volts. Okay? That is the rated voltage, operational voltage. Then this is the number of circles of uh, the circuit breaker. It's uh, about 10,000 circles. And this is the number of poles. Yeah? It's about three poles. Then we have the, the symbol for the thermal and magnetic circuit breaker. So when you see this, you know that the tripping element, okay, is both thermal and uh, magnetic. So we have the two type of tripping element in this uh, circuit breaker. Then if you come down, you also see that we have another circuit breaker. This one, the nominal current rating is uh, 16 amps, okay? which means that the normal operating current is 16 amps. Here is 32, but this one is 16. The nominal voltage is 230 or 400 uh, volts, okay? This is the frequency of operation that uh, you can use it. Then if you look here, here is telling us the maximum current that this circuit breaker can allow without damaging, okay? That is the maximum breaking current or the service breaking uh, current of the circuit breaker. We are seeing it as 6,000 amps. So when it sees this level of voltage, it will trip instantaneously and it will not be damaged. So when you do your load flow calculations, if the circuit, the particular feeder or the line of the circuit that you want to install this particular circuit breaker 
if it is possible to have something that is more than this, that means this particular circuit breaker is not fit for use on that particular circuitry because the possibility in case of problem or fault that you have something more than 6,000 is there. So if it is less than 6,000, fine. Or if you have other protective device that will limit the amount of current from not going beyond that 6,000 amps, okay? Fourth current not going beyond this 6,000 amps, fine, okay? But if you look at it, you see that the operating curve or the tripping curve that is guiding the operation of this one is the C tripping curve, which is this and not this, okay? So if you operate within 16, that is within 16 amps or less, okay, if the circuit is loaded 16 amps or less, this particular circuit breaker will operate infinitely. Then maybe you have two times 16 amps, which is about uh, 32 amps, okay, which is here. Then if this trip curve is what is guiding this operation, okay, it's not necessarily this trip curve. I just want you to understand how to use this particular trip curve, okay? Each of the circuit breaker, they come with their own trip curve. You see them in your manufacturer's data, okay? So now, it means that this one, this is the area of operation. Yeah, it will trip is that you know, so if you have two times here okay it will take about 10 seconds before it will trip so for it to trip instantaneously you must have voltage range of between five uh, sorry current range of between five and ten times the nominal current rating which is uh, 16. are we getting it so once you have anything that is on this area, in this area, the circuit breaker will trip instantaneously. That is why it is a C circuit breaker. So if you have, say, four times, which is an overload, though, four times the nominal current rating, which is around here, this circuit breaker will not trip. It will delay, it will delay for some time before it uh, will trip. So if there are other things in the circuit that that amount of overload will destroy. Of course, it means that uh, you will need other circuit breakers that will be able to trip earlier than this particular or trip instantaneously so as to save that particular equipment. So next you will see this one is a D circuit breaker, 100 amps. This is the, the nominal voltage rating. You see the the uh, breakdown, the service breakdown uh, current, which is a uh, 10 kilo amps, okay, which is a uh, higher than these other ones. So you see the service breakdown uh, current, okay, is about 10 kilo amps. Then here the tripping curve that is guiding this operation is the D tripping curve, which is here, okay. It means that it will trip instantaneously when we have 10 to 20 times. I will get in it. So when you have highly inductive load that have static current that is multiple of uh, the, the nominal current, okay? Say maybe you have an inductive load that starts six or eight times this 100 amps, the nominal current, of course, we want to use this D circuit breaker because this D circuit breaker will be able to accommodate that static current for some time. And then once the motor picks up, the, motor, uh, the current will drop, the load on the circuit will drop. So when that happens, there will not be any form of nuisance stripping. The circuit will continue to operate. Okay, so this is the miniature circuit breaker. And these are some of the information you really need to know, put at the back of your mind when selecting the circuit breaker. So when you want to make selection of uh, the circuit breaker, one, you have to know the voltage environment that you want to apply this particular circuit breaker. That is the nominal voltage that will inform the nominal voltage rating of the circuit breaker. So if it's a 415 environment, the nominal should be 415.
five. Then the load on the particular line that you are protecting, okay, the maximum amount of load that you expect on the line will guide the nominal operating current, your selection of the operating current. So if you're on a particular line, you expect to have maximally, say, 80 amps. As we'll see later, you remember the 80% rule, okay? That is, you don't expect to load the circuit breaker more than 80% of its capacity, okay? So if you have a breaker, say, 100 amps, it means that you will be using, uh, sorry, if you have, you will not, okay, let's say if you have a breaker 100 amps, you will not load it for more than 80 amps, okay? That is the rule. I will get in it. So those are some of the things you put at the back of your mind when doing your selection. So your load flow calculation will tell you the maximum fourth current that you have on each of the circuitry. So that maximum fourth current will inform your selection of the maximum making current, okay, of the breaker and the maximum breaking current of the breaker. Because once there is fault, you expect to see that amount of current on the circuit. So if the breaker is not able to withstand it, it means that once the fault comes, the breaker will be damaged, okay? And then that can cause other problems within the circuit. So these are some of the nameplate uh, information that are very vital to your selecting that you must understand okay before you select the appropriate circuit breaker for your circuitry